I don't think it's changed anything in me, but it certainly has amplified a feeling, a basic feeling that I've had for many years about the, the Earth. I, I think it first started when Jim and I flew in Gemini, and you realize that these boundaries we have are really artificial ones. They took their final walk across the Earth before leaving it for more than six days. With Borman in the lead, the three astronauts suited up and carrying portable air conditioners, headed for the van which would take them to the launch site for the elevator ride to the top of the 36-story tall Saturn V moon rocket. We have ignition sequence start. The engines are on. Four, three, two, one, zero. We have commit. We have Beautiful flight. Man, perhaps on the way to the moon. All continues to go well. Well, I joined NASA in the early 60s uh, specifically to participate uh, in the race against the Soviets, the Russians. Commander Frank Borman and the crew of Apollo 8, Jim Lovell and Bill Anders, took to the skies to explore. Explore a place no other human in the history of mankind had ever been. It was 240,000 miles from Earth, 240,000 miles from home, a home that was divided. Well, you ought to remember, 68 was not a very uh, good year either. The, the war in Vietnam and the, the assassinations and the trouble with the Democratic Convention, uh, it was a very fracturous year. I, I believe we may have even been more divided, or at least as divided as we are as a country now. We have about... Uh less than 40 hours left to go to the moon. With thousands of young soldiers dying in Vietnam, political unrest, and the assassinations of Robert Kennedy and Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., America needed something to believe in. They found that something in the crew of Apollo 8. The further they traveled from Earth, the more we as a country immersed ourselves in their journey. The thrill of exploration into the unknown gave those back on Earth something to embrace and cheer for. As soon as we get to the uh, good view of the Earth, we'll stop and let you look out the window at the scene we see. They had just four months to prepare for the most daring and dangerous mission in NASA's history. And at the same time, the crowning achievement for not only the space program, but for the entire human race. For all the people back on Earth, the crew of Apollo 8 has a message that we would like to send to you. I was told by the head of NASA's public relations that on Christmas Eve we'd have a telecast with that was going to reach more human beings that had ever listened to a human voice before. And the only instructions I got from the government was uh, do something appropriate. I thought that was remarkable. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light. That it was good. And divided the light from the darkness. For more than 68 hours, they hurtled through space at more than 24,000 miles per hour. Focused not on what they left behind, but what lie ahead. That was until they reached lunar orbit history's single greatest image of home came into full view. So it doesn't take much to, uh, to see the uh, Earth out there all by itself, the only color that we can see in the entire universe and realize uh, what we left behind. Bill Anders took that picture that became a stamp and I think that was for me the overriding view, view of, the, of the flight. But uh, over this uh, really tortured landscape or moonscape was this beautiful blue planet, the Earth. It was 240,000 miles away and uh, 
you could see how lonely it really is and how isolated it is and how beautiful it is. And you could see uh, how small and, and uh, fragile it is in the, in the vastness of the universe. Uh, it changed not only my life, but the lives of my family. All of a sudden, from a test pilot and fighter pilot, a, uh, you know, one of thousands, all of a sudden we were one of a uh, few people who had been to the moon. So it, it, there was a, a dramatic change. Ultimately, the crew of the Apollo 8 orbited the moon 10 times, gathering images and data for future missions. Borman, now 90, says he never wanted to go back to space. For him, everything that mattered most in his life was right here on Earth. The most important thing that's affected my life has been my marriage to, to my wife, Susan. She was my anchor, my rock. I was very fortunate. I, I got the, the best of the best. Susan has had uh, Alzheimer's and has been in a nursing home for a long time and I'm one of her caregivers. But I don't look upon that as a duty or a sacrifice. I look upon it as a pleasure. I enjoy being around her. As I said, look, I'm 90 years old. I don't have much longer here, but uh, I have a great faith that, uh, that Susan and I will be together again in, in happiness. At a time when the world needed something to believe in, something to hope for, Apollo 8 delivered an image, an image of ourselves, one that reminds us of everything we hold dear, one that tells us that maybe the most important thing in this life is our fellow man. Frank Borman, Jim Lovell, Bill Anders, never forget those names, and never forget what they accomplished one Christmas Eve 50 years ago. They were heroes then, and they're heroes today. And from the crew of Apollo 8, we close with good night, good luck, a Merry Christmas, and God bless all of you, all of you on the good earth. Brandon Sullivan, MTN News.